Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all the geeks out there in Outer Geekdom, and welcome to another... What am I going to say this time? What am I going to say this time? Our little geekdom! This is the podcast number 22, I believe. Yep, it is. Yeah, look at that. We're on 22 already. We're, we're getting far with this, aren't we? It's quite, it's quite insane. Anyway, hey. yes. Uh, Kez is going to do the introductions because I forget names and I'm terrible with these things and it's early in the morning for me. So. so today on our podcast, we have the wonderful, the only, the Candy Rockets. Oh. <laughs> morning. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so Candy Rocket, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, obviously, what you what you do in the geek community. What is what is your favorite or most known for role in the geek community? Um. Well, I guess currently a variety streamer over on Twitch. Um, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I just game yo living the dream <laughs> um started about six months actually i started six months ago yesterday was my six month twitch anniversary so i oh, saw nice. that yeah <laughs> nice. so amazing time has flown but yeah i guess mm. that's that's what i would be known for in the geek community <laughs> nice nice and uh is this is this on top of your day job like most of us uh, no, I'm very fortunate that um, <laughs> I don't have to have a day job right now. I'm oh, nice. part-time studying UX UI desi- uh, design, and oh, okay. uh, Twitch is basically my main focus at the moment. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. You get the yeah. luxury of being able to do it more often. Yeah, yeah exactly, and put a little more focus in it um, <laughs> than if you know, you're know you doing the daily grind, and then you've got to try and also have the energy for, for twitching <laughs> yeah it gets yeah. a bit much after a while yeah and then mm. when you don't have the light equipment uh like we didn't in south africa it's even hard mm. to stream and things like that now we've got all the perfect equipment we just don't have time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the dilemma that is <laughs> yeah you know work work gets in the way so we do we do videos and stuff instead that's why our youtube channel is like getting so much more traction than, than our twitch Although oh, okay, we are, yeah. yeah, although we are pushing our, our, our twi- well, Kez is pushing her, her Twitch on her side, and I'm pushing Glamesh on mine, so we're, we're, we're slowly getting somewhere. But anyway, it's not about us, it's about you! <laughs> so when you stream and when you um, do your Twitch stuff, what do you do? Because I've noticed that you do, if you hear cats fighting, it's the morning cat play ritual. Um, Love it. <laughs> but um, I've seen that you do little drawings and things as well, so... Tell us what mm. you do when you do your 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 day job, basically. My day job, yeah. It's so weird to think that that's what I can term it now. Uh, surreal, but awesome. Um, so I basically I'm a uh, I would like what you would call like a creative routine type person. I don't know what the word would be, but um, I like to have routine and I like to have a bit of a schedule. And then you know when spontaneity stri- spontaneity strikes, then cool um but basically like i'll have my mellow mondays um because everyone knows starting off a week is roof stoof mm-hmm. <laughs> um the mellow mondays is basically like an art stream with some chill lo-fi beats and um i'll do like little art things and currently what the stream because like i call my stream my community my peeps and we all love brooklyn 99 so we're currently doing the squad in chibi form so that's what we've been busy with oh, on the nice. mondays yeah and um then if there's time or if i'm just not feeling the creative vibe i'll play some stardew or something chill like that um and then the rest of the week uh, because i'm wednesdays and fridays will be like all out war wednesdays first person shooters Mm. mayhem you know play with the community because like i said i like having everyone involved um because without them i'm just someone with a camera playing games right so (laughs) And then Fridays is my freaking Fridays because I love horrors and I love getting scares and apparently people love watching me get scares so I play all the jump scare horrors mm-hmm. and that's that's basically it and then in between there's obviously a whole bunch of like random dancing and terrible singing and just I don't know it's it's a crazy it's a crazy place but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think Kez has got a got a got an issue with playing scary games now. Yeah, especially it... after phasmophobia. <laughs> no, I had a like full meltdown on stream. Um, oh no! Where I I'm petrified, petrified of the dark. There there oh. has to always be some sort of light somewhere. Um, mm. And we went. Someone on one of the other guys that we were playing with stream said, "No, we need to try the 
one of the professional modes. So we did the professional mode in um, in Phasmophobia in one of the schools and there was like no lights whatsoever and none of us really had torches so we had to follow everyone around oh and then Ziv who I was following died and I oh. ended up in this corner and, and I'm just like no I can't do this I can't do this and I, I actually just had a full on meltdown I, I couldn't <laughs> play it after that so I'm taking Yo. a bit of a break yeah. I hear you. It's funny you say that, because um, I tried Phasma once, and I had no idea what I was walking into. <laughs> and I was playing by myself, what, with like, no gear, and I went, I just did a house, and this ghost, you know, when they like, almost walk past you, and they go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I almost lost it as I just ran out the house, and I'm like, nah, nah, this is not for me, you know. Um, <laughs> but my meltdown came after playing Blair Witch. And then going straight into um, uh, Darkness Falls or Darkness something or other. It's a indie game made by an Eastern European lunatic, in my opinion. It is very scary and oh. it, it'll take all your boxes, kids, for not wanting <laughs> to play it. <laughs> yeah, it's really strange. She used to love these kinds of games. I mean, um, I, I, her and I played Outlast together and I, I remember jumping out of my skin. <laughs> <That one. laughs> Um, and and phasmophobia, I was fine with it. It was like, yeah, I played the game, and then we were, you know it's, we were playing with really funny friends, so <laughs> most of us <laughs> joking around while we were walking around, um, and uh, sacrificing this, each other, yeah, sacrificing each other to the nice, to the ghost because nice. why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's available. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, and making jokes at each other, and you know, eventually I mean, we actually the game glitched out at one point when we were playing with other friends. And the ghost was in one section only and wouldn't move out of that section. So he'd walk around the one section of the prison and everyone was free to go everywhere else. You could walk around the whole prison, no problems. It's just that area wow. there that he was walking around. And then one of us was dead there. It was me. <laughs> and I'm just following <laughs> the ghost around, just telling him where he is. <laughs> <laughs> you love when games, games glitch like that. Yeah. Glorious. <laughs> Glorious. I think I'll get back into it eventually. Like, I, I, I did. I used to, like horror games because you get that that jump and it it gives you that that weird sense of you have to have this at least every now and then like mm. i used to it's not super scary games but they they mess with your mind where you play things like um little hope and man of medan and until dawn and um the the jump scary games but not not necessarily the jump scary games what i like is the ones that actually mess with your mind that's why where, so where they give you the psychological scares and and just like you look at something you go wait what's that what's that yeah. what's that <laughs> have you even looked at play Witch yet no i've We've seen we have it and mm. i saw um lady play it on one of her streams and yeah. um i watched a bit of it and i was like it looks interesting i'll play it one day and it's mm. it's sitting there i'm waiting for, i'm waiting to play it but it'll it'll get there one day Okay, because that, that is exactly what it is. It's jump scares in the beginning. Like, I was getting scares from my alerts on stream because I was so tense from the game. <laughs> um, and then as it progresses, like, you just fall deeper into this guy's uh, psychosis and you're just like, what is real? What is it? It's it's very cool. It's a very cool game. So mm. I think you will enjoy it once you're ready for it. <laughs> yeah, the, other, the, the ones that she was talking about, like the uh, Until Dawn guys, the, the guys who made mm. that game. It Look, the games are very well designed. Okay, now, mm. coming from a different perspective, uh, someone like myself, the, the, the games are very well designed. The graphics are very good. The storylines are very well well written. Um, it gives a whole. It gives a whole. Um, I mean, uh, you know, it, it gives you that 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 sense of you know, whoa, what's going on here, kind of thing. What I don't <laughs> like. Because they look so real, it makes you feel mm. like you're there. What I don't oh, like okay. is those action sequences where you have to do the, the timed oh, the quick press time X at this point. I'm <laughs> yeah, sorry, but you I know what? Like take, take all of the immersion out of the game. Put that crap in. It takes the immersion out right, immediately. Mm. It's like when it started doing that, it's like, okay, now you have to duck. Push X. It's like, no, why don't you allow mm. me to actually do it when I want to do it? Not when it has to do it at a certain time. No, just no. Yeah, yeah. All the Definitely immersion like, disappears. It's your reactions. It's yeah. your reactions, right? Because then you're putting yourself in that situation. Exactly. And the minute they almost like 
mechanize it. You're like, well, now I know I'm playing a game. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it takes all of the immersion out of it. I mean, when, when I was playing Outlast, I mean, I was in that game. I, I actually felt like I was in the game because... <laughs> I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard numbers. You're like walking around, and this thing jumps out at me. Mm. I literally, oh. Kez, Kez actually saw me jump <laughs> out of my so chair funny. as well. Because I don't, I don't scare very easily. It, it takes a lot to scare me. <laughs> but I jumped out of my skin as soon as that. It was, it was the bodies come flying at you at that really high speed as you walk around the one corner. Oh. I shat myself on that. But you play, you play until dawn, and it's like little jump scares. It's like it's like little frights, just little frights all over the place, just little frights. Mm. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's not that, that wasn't uh, the, the psychological the psychological point of the story was good, but it did not feel like it was actually sucking me incorrectly. It, it felt like I was mm. disconnected from the entire story, and and I don't like being disconnected from the story. If I'm going to play a game, I must be all in or nothing. And that, 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 mm. that's me. So. Yeah, no, I'm I'm exactly the same. I want to be enveloped. Like, yeah, exactly. Pull me in. Like, even like, um, I'm playing the Dead Space trilogy at the moment, which I know is an old title and stuff, it's but like, <laughs> you're so good. And like, I started number two last night, or it was like more late afternoon, so it's still kind of sunny, you know. I still. <laughs> when the sun's up. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter what yeah. time of day it is. Because <gasps> you just like, like everything else just like disappears around you and you just see the screen and, and like. It gets dark for you're you. You're anyway. so in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, and that's what I, I want in a game like a jump scare game or any sort mm. of horror psychological game. Um, like you said, anything that tells me, okay, push now, you're like, ugh. Yeah. Can we just not? Um, but I, I know. Like, I don't know the title. I haven't played the titles that you're speaking about, other than, obviously, I've seen Outlast. But um, No Hope, I think you mentioned. No, Little Hope. Um, Little Hope, yeah. Little Hope, yes. I've got that on my wish list, and I've been like, hmm, 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 shouldn't I, shouldn't I? It's, it's so. still got the quick time events, but That's what Little called. Little Hope is, um, they, they did a lot more of the actual story. Um, okay. So there's not that many quick time events. It's more, it more draws you in. Little Hope is mm -hmm. out of the three. So they did Until Dawn, then they did Man of Medan, and then they did Little Hope. And Little Hope mm. is the more, the one that messes with your brain more story-wise. Mm. Yeah, it's very um, psychological. It's more psychological, whereas the others were more um, jump scares here and there and focusing mm. on, mostly focusing on the, the quick time events where this one... Um, Look, I played it a while ago, but from what I can remember, there wasn't that many. It was more exploring and seeing what was going on and getting the actual story behind it, which was really, really cool. Mm. Okay, okay. Well, I'll have a look at it once I've done this Dead Space trilogy, if I'm still mentally sane enough to do it. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. The jump scares in this are real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually so looking good, at though. playing Dead Space now. <clears throat> I've been wanting to play it for a while, so I just haven't had the the, the angle to install it because I've got so many other games I'm playing. I've got like, mm. uh, I mean, I'm busy playing Kingdom Come Deliverance now on my PC. Um, oh, wow. I was playing it on my PlayStation, and then, um, well, Kez, Kez takes up lounge time way too much, so I can't really play on the, <laughs> on, the, on, the on, on the PlayStation very often. So, and she gets bored watching me play it, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just put it on the PC then. So I bought it for the PC. It's and... not really that I get bored; it's that I, <laughs> because it's a first person, I I struggle to um focus on it for long periods of time that's why i struggle to sometimes play first person games if i'm playing it it's fine but if i'm watching someone i've noticed it's it's quite bad <laughs> where i i start to feel sick from the motions that are Post going on because um, <laughs> I, I i i've said this before i suffer from quite bad motion sickness and okay. if i see like when he's busy playing that game and he's moving around or he's fighting or something then you just see all that that movement and if you're not playing it yourself, it's different um, from seeing it mm. when you're watching mm. someone. And it, it actually makes me feel a bit sick after after a while. So that's why. It's, it's it's an interesting game, not something I would play, but that that's the main reason. So, it's because mm. it's hard. It's because it's hard. <laughs> it is. It's fighting, hard, yeah. Sword fighting in that game is not easy because you've got to literally, I mean, even with the mouse and keyboard, it's, it's a little bit easier with mouse and keyboard, funny enough, than it mm. is with the PlayStation controller. Because with the controller, you've got to move your stick to a certain direction to be able to aim the the, the blade in, in, in any particular direction. Because you know you've got your left swap, your right swap, your upper swap, your upper swap, your upper swap, and um, your head your headshot and your um, your thrust. So you've got to do all of those with a mouse with, with a, a little controller. It's not as easy as a Yo. mouse and keyboard because a mouse and keyboard is going dead 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 dead. You 
moving it around like yes. this and the mouse is moving with you. So I'm finding it a bit easier to play on PC. It's kind of like playing Skyrim. It's, yeah, it's kind of no, yeah. like it's, a it's Skyrim very, vibe. Yeah, it's, hmm. it's like a, okay. a proper historical Skyrim. So it's all about, okay, if you guys know about the the, 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 the Hasid Wars, you'll, you'll know what it's about. Um, yeah, I'm a big history buff. I do talk a lot about history, just so everyone knows. But um, <laughs> the Hasid Wars actually started after King Charles the Fourth, I think it was, had died uh, in the 14th century, and his son had taken over. His son Wenceslas. Now, this has obviously got to do with um, that particular war, and you are you are just one person in that war of, of uh, the 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 war, essentially the war of attrition between. Um, uh, Sigismund and and Wenceslas, who were essentially two kings, or they were half brothers, but they were kings of different countries. Um, Sigismund was the king of, uh, I suppose you'd call it Germany now, but uh, I can't remember what it was called back then. Um, and I think it was Luxembourg or something like that. It was it was one of the the, the small one of the weird names cities, that they yeah. usually had. And um, Wenceslas was the king of Bohemia, which was which is now today Czech, uh, uh, the I think it's now the Czech Republic. Um, but uh, essentially, it was around Prague and all that stuff where all of this happened. And um, the the war started after Wenceslas was becoming a rather shitty king. He 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 wasn't, according to the the nobles, he wasn't a very good king. He wasn't doing his job properly and all of that stuff. And what what happens is is uh, Sigismund comes in, forces his brother out of the throne or off of the throne for a certain amount of time until he's ready to actually take over the throne but he does it wrong and he's not Sigismund was never a good leader what he used to do was to have his to have the people follow him he would just go and you know just straight out flatten entire cities and towns well towns more um he 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 literally just destroyed entire towns and killed all the people in them because that's how you how you gain followers for your for your your um, your country you just kill them all because then there won't be very many people to follow you so he, and he fear. Was, yeah, exactly so he was he was a bit of a shit leader and um and there were leaders like um uh I'm gonna, what was his name sir radzig he, he's one of the leaders that actually fought against Sigismund and um, they managed to finally get uh, Wenceslas back on the throne uh, and then Wenceslas obviously only he he was only king of Bohemia he was he was actually supposed to be the Holy Roman Empire which is basically all of Luxembourg uh, Bohemia and um, well all of Bohemia actually which was Luxembourg uh, Prague uh, all the cities around there and further down into I think Austria as well um, I may be wrong. I'm not too, too sure about the maps yet. I, I haven't studied enough of the history there, but there's a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and you can hear, you, you can see, I, I do, I do study my history. I just, I, if I don't know something, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. If there's something that I've made a mistake with, please correct me. I am literally not citing this from anything right now. I don't have anything on my screen other than the uh, the, the video, as as kids can see, or as as everyone can see in the corner there. Well, not you, guys, <laughs> but you, you, you guys can see. And if we don't <laughs> stop him, he will go on for hours and hours and hours. I will. Um, so I will. I've been staring at that painting behind you. Did you do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's really um, pretty. Oh, thank you. It's, I, uh, I mean, you don't really know when a painting's done, right? But that's definitely <laughs> not very close to done. <laughs> um, it's basically, it was made to be uh, my boyfriend Sean's birthday present. His birthday's in January. And um, yeah, it's getting there, but it's basically a view from what I could see here in my like art studio, Twitch studio. Oh, nice. And then, yeah, I'm going to have like Robin Island. It's all going to be silhouetted. And so it's still got to do a lot of the shading and things. But thank you. I'm glad you like it so far. <laughs> She's yeah. herself. Uh, well, the next uh, January is coming around so it can be for the next birthday. The next bit there, yeah. Jeez, I'm going to have like a whole commission for him at this stage. Every year it's going to roll on to the next. Um, so, okay, okay, so you're also an artist. Well, I'm still learning. Like, I, I, my dad used to draw a lot when I was growing up. And he used to um, have all these books and little mannequin things and paintings. And he used to say to me, come draw with me. And then I started doing art classes in school. But, you know, in high school, you're like, yeah, no, this is boring. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I didn't follow it. And then recently, um, it actually, when when we moved to Scotland, I, I felt like drawing again. And I randomly just started drawing. And um, since then, I've, do, I've been doing like little bits. And um, 
work got in the way but at least once a week I, I i try when i can to draw something so that if it's even if it's not my own where i have like a picture up and i i reference that but then what i do after that is i change it so it, it may look like the drawing that i started with um like mm. their drawing but i put little bits and pieces in to make it my own kind of thing and then um that I've done a few that I that I think of myself um, just to get like those muscles flowing and stuff and then um, we recently got um, it's really cool it's it's really random but she's gonna show you she's gonna show you I, <laughs> I, I actually got it for her because she refuses to Ooh. buy things for herself she ref uh, most of the stuff this art nice stuff is what I actually purchased for her because she, she refuses to buy it herself Oh what! Oh my goodness, Disney! <laughs> but we, <laughs> we Disney. actually bought it because I've got this huge art set now with oil pastels <laughs> and paints and um, so it's different pastels and um, different paints and different um, pencils and um, a whole bunch of things. There's like 108 different art supplies in this thing wow. and it comes with a canvas. It's really cool. Mm, that's um, super cool. And not with a canvas. Sorry, an easel. <laughs> yeah, it comes with I, an easel. It's like, I'm sure it would come with more than one canvas, but I gathered it was probably an easel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. There's, there's a few can canvases inside the box. Um, to, ex to explain how she gets this stuff, just so everyone uh, everyone out there understands this, Kez is very particular. She will not buy something unless she wants to buy it for me. Otherwise, she won't buy it. That's she's difficult that way. So I have to generally buy her the things that she she wants. So she'll see this 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 art box, which is what she saw. She's like, I really like it, but it's so expensive. It's like it's 50 pounds. It's so expensive. I'm like, Angel, buy it. She's like, no, but I don't want to. So I'm like, OK, well, fine. You don't. I will. So I went on. I went on to, to Amazon and I bought it for her and I got it delivered because she refused That's to amazing. buy it. She <laughs> she's like this with all art stuff. and. You know, it's her passion, so I'm not going to stop her from mm. from actually doing something that she loves. You know, um, so yeah. th that's where she got in with that, and now, now obviously, I'm I'm very mm. happy to say that she's actually gotten further. So I'm you know, getting there slowly. Now you can carry on. Yeah, and now you can carry mm. on. Yeah, the the color pad that I showed you, we actually got because we thought it was um, the the paper to use for <laughs> yeah. water paintings and stuff. Yes. And we opened it, and it has all the little Disney pictures in it. So now I'm using it to practice. Um, okay. My painting because I've never painted in my life, so I'm okay. I'm using it to practice the painting skills and stuff. And then once I'm used to that, then I'll do my own paintings and yeah, learn from there. So that's the thing is like because I also I would definitely be a starving artist purely because <laughs> I, I am like this is like eh you know eh that's all right and. Um, <clears throat> I think like wow it's so cool and then i'm like the back of my head like i think kids correct me if i'm wrong but most artists have like this little like this naughty little gremlin voice that's like they're just saying it to be nice they yep. don't mean it you know that's, that's every artist, um, that's every artist yeah. regardless, regardless uh, of the field exactly well, how much experience you have like <laughs> that's what i've just noticed so like when people say you fake it till you make it that's basically it and every yeah. time you do a painting you say it's you know you're getting better but it's that is the best painting you're ever gonna do today mm. and then tomorrow and the next day you know mm. and um i just i treat everything as a practice because if i put too much pressure on myself i'm just like i'm not gonna do it because i'm not gonna yeah. do it 100 percent. i'm an all or nothing kind of person mm. so i got super comfortable with sketching and graphite was my medium and then i'd spend like i have the opposite um problem to kids where I will spend all my money on art supplies <laughs> even if I don't need them <laughs> there's other stuff I won't um and but I'll spend it all on graphite like I won't expand so then for me to expand Sean's like why don't you try this I'm like no 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 no, no. it's a waste of money I'll never be good at it so he's like okay so like with oil painting he's like <laughs> I'll buy the supplies and you can give it to me as a gift I'm like that's no <laughs> sense but okay let's let's do that but it works you know so yeah, so I never would have gotten into oil painting because it's the most intimidating medium to me. Yeah, but wow. we're getting there. Is, I, I, when I was in school, I, I took art um, only because it was an easy subject for me. Um, and the only reason why it was easy is not I, I'm, I'm a cuck. I'm an, I can't draw for shit, just so everyone knows. <laughs> I am a 
terrible. If you watched the stream last night, you'll know I cannot draw. I am terrible. Played Gothic phone last night. I, I literally draw oh, stick figures. Oh. I, I'm, I'm horrible at art. But <laughs> it was an easy subject for me from standard 6 to standard 8 when I needed an extra subject. And mm. the, the extra subject, the only reason why I'd chosen art is because this the art that they wanted was it was modern modern art but modern uh what do you call it um abstract art modern abstract art. Oh, yes. so i was like okay mm -hmm. cool i can do that because the day before the project was set to be handed in i would literally just splash paint on the, on the canvas and go ah! and, hey <laughs> and here's here's the funny thing i used to get really good marks for those paintings i used to just splash paint on a on a, on a canvas and go the, you know how you get good marks for it? In school, you know how you get good marks for it? It's simple. Mm. Explain the painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the process. Where I was emotionally whilst exactly. I was throwing paint on this canvas. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and they will take it in hook, line and sinker. Where I'm actually good and why, why I agree with you about artists who, who judge themselves and will, will always judge themselves and the, and the project will never be finished because you know there's always something more you can do there's always something more you can fix you can make it look better make it look better make it look better the same thing with me i'm actually a musician so a different kind of artist oh, okay. but mm. still an artist and oh, yeah, yeah. when i write a song it, it still it encapsulates the same way you write the song and you're like no this is shit. <laughs> i don't like this it doesn't work i've got to do a different song and you keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again it never ever ever stops until someone actually says to you, if you don't stop, you're never going to finish it. So mm -hmm. that's why you have to have a band when you're a musician. But with me, I'm, yeah. I, don't, I don't have a band, so I just do it myself. And uh, you have to mentally stop yourself. So it's very difficult. Mm. He has he Kez's has artwork. She's going to show no, you a it's, bunch. No, it's two that I'm most proud of that I did recently. Oh, <gasps> oh no. Yeah. And I love raccoons. Oh, they're so cute. Oh my word! Is that the Cheshire Cat? It I is. love him. I love him. Yeah. He is adorable. So, so you see, she's those she's are the two actually, I'm most proud of. Yeah, she's those actually are awesome. a very good artist. She's actually an extremely good artist. I have. I'm not going to show anything off because I have nothing to show off. Um, just so everyone <laughs> knows, as a musician, we don't have anything to show off. Um, but uh, yeah, she's an unbelievably good artist. Uh, she 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 picks up things very quickly you know that was uh, she drew those uh from memory as far as i know the cheshire cat was from memory the the first one was from a book that my brother and sister-in-law got, got me for christmas that was how to draw chibis and little um cute um characters and then i added my own little tweaks and turns to them as always but amazing that that it's kind of from copying it but still it was one of the very, very first ones that I actually drew. Mm. No, she's she's so an exceptional cool. artist. She is really is yeah, a great it, artist. Like, those are amazing. And I know, like, in your mind, you're probably going, could be here, could be there. And it's awesome that you're proud of it. But, like, mm. oh, oh, I'm saying it is awesome that you're proud of it. Because most times, I'm just like, well, I'm going to put that in my sketchbook and put it away. I've actually got here. Check here. One second. You know when you don't have stuff on hand so yeah. like <laughs> this is a sketchbook that i just i love paging through on my own because like i always find when i look back on stuff i feel a bit better about it because it's yeah. done and forgotten you know yeah but you like um, that you've grown. exactly so like i did a whole uh, do you know inktober no um mm. the, the challenge is called inktober, oh, inktober I yeah yes, mm. I, yeah, yeah my sense. dad used to do it Oh, it's so much fun, but it eventually gets so like so much pressure. So I did it in 2018 and I did all the like my theme was Disney because again if I don't have a theme or a routine, I feel like I'm swimming in an ocean yeah. of crazy. Mm. Um so I did a Disney one and like most of them I wasn't that happy with, but like this one was one of my favorites. It was um the guy <laughs> from oh, wow. Moana. And then just something so simple as just a little Dumbo. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. 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 Um, but when I did them, I was like, oh, thank God they're done. I hate them. But now I'm yeah. like, oh, they're not bad. They're quite cute, you know. Um, but yeah, I just you just keep on keeping on as an artist. Mm. That's my, my yeah, thing. Yeah, th that's also something yeah. that the kids have got a problem with, actually, come to think of it. She will she will literally say, oh, but it's not it's not as good as other artists. It's because you're not other artists. Learn. Yeah. It, it takes time. You don't, you're not, a, you don't become a, a, a freaking Leonardo da Vinci in, in one day. It takes years to mm. get that good. 
You know, it takes yeah, years. Yeah, do you to even want to be like that? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's not even your style. Yeah, you know? exactly. Do you, do you really want to be an unfinished, uh, an artist who can never finish his paintings? You know, yeah. I, I know the history of the artist more than I actually know art. How, how, how funny is that? Uh, well, that knowledge is great because you can back up any like doubts <laughs> that kids has. Be like, no, 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 no. He wasn't as accomplished as you think. And no, he wasn't. Uh, he know. really wasn't. The, the, the actually, yeah. the, the the real artist who was who was actually. Um, uh, call me a liar. It was. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. He he did one good thing. He managed to do the Sistine Chapel, and he actually managed to finish it. But that was like one thing that he'd ever done. <laughs> but, oh, it's a pretty big thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty big thing. Yeah, that was. But you know, it was. It was a case of he had to do it because he was paid to do it. So, mm. um, and the church required him to finish it. So that was one of those things that you know you have to do because. You know, yes. You got paid in advance. You got to do it. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And one of the biggest organizations in the world is like, brah, you got to finish this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, they, they tended to kill people back in those days if they didn't do their jobs because, you know, it is the church. Well, openly it's... kill them anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When, when I, that, is, that, was the, that was the Catholic church back then. I mean, there was, there's mm. plenty of stuff that you can learn from things like, like history. The artists... Um, if, if, for example, kids had to name an artist that I didn't know, I'd look up the artist and I'd see what they're about. Mm. And I'd find out, you know, where did they start? How long did it take them to get there? And I'd say, it took them this long to get there. Bide your time. Relax. Just carry on. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. The You will get yeah. better as you move along. And she realized that after she looked at her first yeah. drawings, and yes, that's where she so got important. to now, because she realized, oh, wait, I'm actually getting better at what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not as bad as I was when I first started. And... She said to me, look at this picture. It's terrible. It's, it's so ugly. The first picture she ever drew. And I was like, yes, it's not a great picture, Angel, but look at where you've come from there. You know, when mm. I first when I first saw the picture, I said, you, you've got to practice. You're not going to you're not going to get there immediately. You know, um, I, I, I always had to revert back to myself learning how to play guitar. I taught myself how to play guitar. So. Oh, wow. Well um, done. I do not have the patience. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was it was it was a very hard process. It was a long going process. Um, it took me. Uh, let's see. It was six months to learn how to play four chords together. You know, so and that, that was in the beginning. Once I'd learned those four chords together, I started picking things up a lot faster. I started learning how to actually play faster and f uh, flip between chords and things. I cannot play leads for anything, so um, I'm not. A, I'm not a brilliant guitarist. All I can do is play rhythm. I'm just a rhythm guitarist. So I'm one of those boring guys that just makes the music in the background. It's my first pen one. <laughs> that was her first pen one. Yeah. You and know it's what? Not that bad. It does, it's not bad. It's, you know what it is? It is. You think it's bad because you had something in your mind that you wanted it to look like, and it didn't turn out that mm -hmm. way. I have no point of reference when I look at that, and I think that is a really awesome stylized little. I'm assuming husky or a border collie, <laughs> and it's. I think it's really cool. I think it's really nice. Like you could almost like downsize and make a little sticker out of it, because you know, it's your style, you know. And yeah. I think it's awesome. That's my first color one. That one was quite <gasps> weird. That is so cool. But again, <laughs> the fact that you made it blue with green spots—it's it's just... actually it's actually based on a little little toy that she's got. Yeah, we've got <laughs> little little toys. Awesome. Um, with they've got these tiny little bodies, huge heads, and huge eyes. And oh, I know like, exactly. What you're I'm gonna about. draw that. And mm. that's oh, what that one is. <laughs> and that's the thing is like, and you could take, and that is just so gorgeous as it is, even though you don't feel like it is. Because if you also look at kids' storybooks, like the illustrations in there, like, seem so basic, but a lot of artists can't draw like that because they overthink, they yeah. over detail. Mm. So there's like all these styles and all these things. And that's what I learned. Um, because I watched a lot of YouTubers and I uh, did a, some Skillshare classes just to try and break out of this. This is how the painting should look or this is how this should mm -hmm. look. And um, there's some crazy techniques and stuff out there that at the end of the day, like I said, today's the best piece of art you're going to create to this point. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't you matter. Can't, like, you can't, this you is can't the best. get any better than the, the yes. second you're drawing that particular you know? picture. Yeah, it makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> and like even like you're saying with your music and stuff, um, like I know I just don't have the patience and some people don't have the patience to practice art and stuff because, you know, whatever boils down to the belief or if you actually have the inverted commas skill, whatevs. Um, yeah. But like you're saying, like once you learned those f um, four chords um, and the same with drawing is that muscle memory. Mm. It, it kicks in and like it actually made me think and going really like it's my first person shooter geek mode i'm just learning how to play <laughs> apex legends 
<laughs> on mouse and keyboard. I'm a controller girl. I've always been a console person until recently. And when I say <laughs> I would rather learn piano than trying to play mouse and keyboard in Apex Legend, <laughs> I'm not joking. There's so much happening. But like, once you get the first few like moves down, mm -hmm. it starts progressing. Your movements get better and stuff. And I would assume it's the same with guitar. And like, I found that with yeah. sketching yeah. as well or drawing is you got to get that that loose wrist and the da, 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 you know so yeah it just takes time that's the thing just keep on keeping on <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah speaking speaking of of um of of uh, fps's and and uh, mouse and keyboard i've actually been a hybrid my entire life so mm. essentially i've always preferred to play fps's on pc and i've always preferred to play racing games and third person games on console now the reason why is because on console when you're running third person uh, especially like if you're playing your assassin's creed and whatnot you got your controller you know how to you, you can get your character to aim in the perfect direction to be able to get up that wall you know um pc is a little more difficult because um, i'm not used to mouse and keyboard when it comes to doing that so the i'll turn my character completely around because i'm so used to because <laughs> i'm using my high speed dp or my high dps mouse and the, mm. so, so i'll be running one way and then Ezio turns around and faces the other way while i'm busy <laughs> turning so that kind of stuff happens um and I, i'm still getting used to it but it's not not like i have to i've got my controller so I, I try to play the game with the controller as much as i can that's the whole thing you've got to you've got to actually build up that 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 skill once you've been doing it when you've been doing it for the longest time i've never i was never good at fps's in the beginning i had a friend who used to teach me how to play or, or used to play half-life against me and he used to whip my ass every <laughs> single day and he knew he would so he used to just do it for the fun of it oh it's fun to just go huh okay there he is bang there he is bang there he is bang yeah until one day i figured out i'm gonna be able to kick your ass because i, I started playing call of duty like the very first call Ooh. of duties and um so i'm busy playing call of duty and i'm learning i'm learning the ropes and how to how to actually do all this stuff and then i played i played uh, call of duty against him and i whipped his ass he had no what? chance against me because eventually you get so comfortable with the with the, with how a mouse and keyboard works. Turning is mm. easy. Aiming is actually a lot easier with a mouse than it is mm. with a, a, a controller because you've got easier access to to be able to pinpoint exactly where your target is. That's yeah. how I feel. With a with a with a controller, there is the advantage where you can put your 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 crosshair in a particular direction and then just step left. But you can do the same thing with a mouse. But again. I always hold the mouse, so it's it, there's there's a it's a process. It's just it's a uh, I can't even explain it. I'm not good at explaining that kind of stuff, you know. It's just, it, <laughs> it's like you said, learning to, learning to play the piano. I can't really argue that because um, you know I you I, know how to play the piano. Know how to so play so. the piano. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I already got that wax. It's all good. <laughs> not perfectly. I can't play the piano very well. His would be learning how to dance. Yes. Oh. I, okay. I cannot dance for shit. My rhythm. I have two left feet. That the funny thing is, I am <laughs> I can hold a rhythm perfectly on the guitar, on the piano, on the drums, but you try and make me dance to that rhythm. Yeah, it's, it doesn't work. Would, would you describe your dancing like when uh, Windows ninety five was released with Bill Gates and his whole crew on the stage? Uh, Have you seen that video? <laughs> uh, yes, but I, uh, you, you okay, Josh. <laughs> Put the video in so that I can see what it looks like. That's what I look like when I dance. But it's what actually happens bad. when I dance, my brain my brain literally goes boom like the windows sound. It, it does. does. I've seen it. Like for, for <laughs> fun one day we did we did a little like YouTube video um test class thing just to see because he, he wanted to learn how to do hip hop stuff. And we did this one very simple pop and lock um tutorial with a guy and i could Pop see and his brain cool. going no no <laughs> no 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 <laughs> error 404 error 404 yeah. <laughs> honestly i i i would get i would start doing the dance i would start doing it i'd get perfect movement in the beginning and then it would just my brain would go fuck this it's when you put everything <laughs> together so when you do the moves and you go and the guy goes okay do this and then you practice this and you do it in this and then okay do the next one and then you do the oh, next yeah. one and then that's fine and then when it's like put it all together and you have to put it all together that's when his brain just goes nope <laughs> no no does not compute <laughs> no I, I, yeah, and the funny thing is okay it's i can't split my body the way the way they want to in dancing i can't do what they do in dancing my brain just doesn't want to want to do it because i am 
meticulous with, with with how everything works with me so when i play the guitar the notes have got to be perfect when i play the piano the notes are going to be perfect even though i'm not good at piano like an artist because kez kez, yes. kez says that <laughs> i can play the piano but i can only play the piano to a certain extent i'm not brilliant i know oh. i know how to play c g minor and f as hard chords and i can sometimes screw around with the with the um the the, the lead chords it's like playing classical guitar which is something i can actually do but um the 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 thing is drums is where i actually put this where, where i actually make the where it makes the most sense i can split my body up into four parts this one does one thing this one does one thing this one does the other thing my leg does one thing my other leg does the other thing mm. simple you know okay <laughs> you hold the rhythm with this hand so this is your hand that goes t -t 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 easy this one here is your snare hand so it's t -t 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 easy right then you got your <laughs> kick which is your right leg so it's easy right and then you can lift your 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 hi-hat so it goes so it's simple stuff like that you get understanding how to do that you put that in dancing my brain just goes fuck that what is that what are you trying to do to me that doesn't work like that so and then if i do that i feel like my drums are going to start failing you've got to throw in the hips you've got to throw in the hips with the dance yeah it's not just four and your head the hips and your shoulders and your hands like literally your hands your fingers your entire body yeah my body's just everything screw you everything i mean you got beatboxing down as well it appears you know you got all that stuff that's 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 literally that's literally just drums that's not beatboxing the most i can go <laughs> <laughs> but i'm um, talking about hips like um and just i don't know and i don't want it to become stereotypical or be like oh candace you think all guys because i know there are men that can dance i yeah, mean uh, there are definitely yeah. 110 men that can dance but um as a whole you know because obviously women have hips and we mm -hmm. know how to move hips you know from an early age or whatever the story may be yeah um and i'm a trick dance i know i'm a trick when we were um in santa nine we had to um like host the matrix so we decorated the hall with the waiters and then we had to do like a little dance oh high school anyway and um <laughs> the, the the we did um it's uh, the the indian celebration of lights or something that was our theme so we oh, all yeah. went saris and the guys win those beautiful um white uh, pant top anyway so we're all doing that exactly now, obviously, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you have to put your hands above your head and then like you sway your hips and stuff you know mm -hmm. is this part of this move of the dance because we actually had a, a lady come in and teach us and um shame the one guy in front of me adam bless his soul he really just had no rhythm and yeah like guys had it but he literally like if you can imagine a, a tortoise standing on its hind legs <laughs> and i to this day i've never forgotten that my friend sabrina and i when we ever break it we're in we're in stitches because he really was trying but it was just mm. like this tortoise shaking his shell around <laughs> and that was the just of the <laughs> movements there <laughs> yeah that's no, it's true it's true that look like, what i've noticed and this is why I, why i was saying that that i could do or i wanted to do the hip-hop part of things is mm. um hip-hop there, there are two sides to hip hop I've noticed when I okay because Kez has got this this fascination with um, with the step up movies she loves the step up movies so she so I've watched these movies with her and I've noticed one They're thing awesome. about it they are very good aside I, I from the story the I like the dancing I don't like the yeah, stories yeah, yeah. I like I like nope. I watch it for the dancing yeah so, yeah 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 <laughs> so so watching these dance scenes I've noticed one thing the guys are very uh, like straight moving in particular directions you know they're doing like mm. well the pop and lock thing essentially that's mm. what the guys generally do um and they're that, that yeah they're very they're, their <laughs> movements are very toit <laughs> whereas the girls are more fluid the, the the movements are more they they, they sway a lot more and they mm. they they can well for one bend in very very peculiar directions you know they can do things that <laughs> most of the guys in that dancing stuff cannot do and it just the two you put those two together and it actually just it works really well um mm. and and i've noticed that that's that's one of the reasons why i wanted to do that was because the guys we're, we're not built to do what girls do when it comes to dancing mm. our hips don't work like that we do not <laughs> no. have hips like girls we're guys we know well, we, we have can. a v-shape you can though because <laughs> just it's a button. 
Because <laughs> if you do like the ballroom dancing and stuff, mm-hmm. then you have mm. the guys that can do the swaying of the hips and stuff. Mm. The, in, Somewhat. In some of them. So a lot mm. of the ballroom mm. dancing is where the guy is more stiff and upright and all that. But then you have your dancers like your rumbas and your salsas and your cha mm. where they have mm. to have those loose movements but again it's a different style of dance yeah but also if you look at the rumba when when a guy does the rumba and a girl does the rumba it's also still a different Mm. look the guy still Mm. looks different Mm. even though they're they're swaying their hips they're not doing it the same as the girls do because our bodies are not built for that our bodies are but we literally are a v we're a v-shape we can't sway like you Mm. it's 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 it's, (laughs) it's just it's it's very difficult for a guy to sway like that so we're like we're more stiff when it comes to the dancing thing but then there's a there's a role for a man who dances stiffly you know you look at your ballroom dancing it's mm. very stiff upright mm. the man has got his his um his way of holding and then they launch across the the, the dance floor and you can see the differences mm. the, the the woman flows as she moves and the guy's basically the pillar as she's busy turning around on that pillar he's he is anchoring her into the ground is what i'm always yeah like seeing he's the structure dance. yes and, that's and, what i'm and, seeing and, and, like it's almost like it, it sounds ridiculous because it's so static actually at the end of the day, but it's like a flagpole. Yeah. If the pole moved, I guess. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. You know? I mean, this is this is um, all coming from from observation. Yes, definitely from observation. Because like other than my clubbing days when I was a little hooligan, uh, I don't know much about dancing. <laughs> so, other than what I've watched, I mean, I loved uh, Strictly Come Dancing and. Mm. Or, I mean, not only just for the dancing, but the costumes and the, yeah. you know, because that's the thing. It's like I um. I've always wanted to be in entertainment. Like, you know, when you're young, I want to be an actress. I'm like, gosh, you know. <laughs> but then obviously you grow up, you're like, oh, I don't know if I actually want that. So I actually studied film um, for a short time. I wanted to be an editor and mm. all that. But then, like, you see, like, stage design and costume design and the makeup. Like, on Netflix, there's that glow up. Oh, my gosh, it's so good. It's like art on face. Um, and there's just so many amazing things. And I just love all those shows. Um, so... <laughs> Anything I kind of say about dancing is based off that observation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> mm. Now I, you know what I think. All of us have had that. Yeah. Um, uh, Kez has always wanted to be a dancer. Uh, that was always her thing when yeah. she was younger. Uh, yeah. Me, I, I, I can honestly say I've lived it. Um, I, I, oh, amazing. I, I can't say I was. I was. We were famous or anything, but I've been in a few bands. I've played on stage. We've played for. We've played. We've headlined for. Not headlined. We've. Um, uh, what is it called? Um, opened opened thank you yes we've opened for mm. a few for a few headliners um some of the like your um your uh, what are they called uh, ross from prime circle. prime circle thank you yes we we opened for oh. prime circle once um very 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 long time ago <laughs> <laughs> um we opened for oh one God. day remains one day remains yes um, oh wow we 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 were uh oh, the reason why we opened for one day remains is only because they were they were um friends of ours friends so of ours, yes. the, the <laughs> bassist in in ziv's band at that time was the brother-in-law no the brother no, of, yeah, no the no, brother-in-law brother-in-law of the lead guitarist lead guitarist, lead guitarist for one no, day remains no he was the drummer no, I don't know. Lead guitarist for One Day Remains. Then the drummer from One Day Remains, his brother was the drummer from Prime Circle. <laughs> so it became like this this tight circle, and and that's how they got to do those kinds of shows. Yeah, but uh, also when we were yeah. Third Road, we played at Tempos. I mean, it was everyone's dream to what? play at that club. Everyone's dream. Wow. Oh, Every that's band awesome, wanted to man. play there, and we managed to get main stage once. So there was Ooh. that. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, that, that's bragging rights. You don't have to be like, it was that. That's like, uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't sweet. great though. It was like there was hardly anyone there. But uh, the whole thing is, yes, we, he, you he's got an there. artist. We yes, got... he really is. He's like, <laughs> are we just this? Like, there's no just. You did it. Like, nah, it's it wasn't awesome. that. It wasn't that important. <laughs> but uh, we also we went on tour around jo- around Gauteng, um as well. We managed to go on tour down to 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 other places as well. But it was very. That was also it was. And the dodgiest uh, place they ever played was an uh, old strip, strip club. club. <laughs> oh wow! That was that oh, was so bad. That, was, that was that was that was actually two steps left. So Third Road was the first band wow. that actually made a success um, and started making a success. We were so we were actually 
we were we were asked to play at uh, the Plettenberg Bay Rock Festival, uh, which was going to be canceled. a very big f- festival, and then it got cancelled. Uh, we were. Very it was kind of like there. it was like a mini. It was going to be like a mini Woodstock kind of thing. I know. It's okay. Gonna be, it was going to be bigger than Woodstock. Yeah, but still, it, w- it was that <laughs> kind of vibe where it was going to mm. be over. F- I think it was three or four days, and then oh, wow. the planning yeah. and stuff fell through. So yeah, so uh, it is. After that, the band's yeah. came up. But then uh, we moved on to... I moved into... or started with the new band, which is Ad Um And they were... Uh, th- that we, we that was the band where we met uh, the guys from One Day Remains. And uh, uh, Ross met Ross. The lead singer from one band met the lead singer from the other band with exactly the same name. It was funny. And someone screamed... I remember we were at the one Bry and someone was calling Ross and both of us turned around. <laughs> he, he looks at me, he's like, you think you're that special? I looked at him, I'm like, yes. <laughs> I do. That's <laughs> uh, funny. You um, know, I'm just thinking there's probably a good chance we ran into each other because um, I was very good friends with their sound tech, Gareth, Prime Circles. Oh, it's very possible. Tech, so it is I used very to possible. hang out with them a lot. Mm. <laughs> and that's not exactly. I, I've, I've met so many people <laughs> in my life, though, when it comes to that. Um, and yeah. obviously, it was it was two steps left. That was the We were a smaller band, we played at Rumors a lot. Um, that was like oh, the rumors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I definitely would have seen you then. Yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah we played on stage with uh, the, my favorite band to play on stage with. Honestly, at rumors was Spank the Monkey before they changed before their name. Before they changed their name to the Oohs and Ahs. Yeah, to the Oohs and Ahs. They, oh, were, they, my they were Spank the Monkey, but we used to love playing oh. with those guys because um, they were always they always had the most uh, the most like jumpy attitude on stage. I used to love playing with them. Mm. Uh, I, I'm I'm a very boring person on stage. I, I, I'm not the the the, the jump around kind of person i sing mm. and i play and th- that's what i do so i I'm, I'm happy to just record music and let people listen to it which is why i don't really care if mm. i play on stage anymore because you know yes i miss the days of playing on stage but it's not necessary and we live here in scotland now so it's a bit more difficult to mm. get on stage um oh, wait, really is it a different like culture there with well some... no it's just we just don't know anyone <laughs> we 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 have, we've been here for almost two years so mm. and and we've mm. moved recently so it's finding our feet making friends and with lockdown you can't really make friends here yeah no no that's true that's true yeah that's exciting though i desperately want to go to scotland i'm well, like you, scottish heritage so if you ever do you've got a place to stay Yes. Yeah. Well, when we when we get our bigger house, but we're... still the invitation is there. Oh, that's that reminds <laughs> me. For for all of you out there, Kez was Kez was worried because she she saw a PS5 bundle, and it was going for uh... 600 pounds because it had a controller and two games and a PS5 and all that. And she was like, maybe we should get that. And then she's like, yeah, but I don't want to dip into the house funds. Please Adulting. tell her. Please tell Adulting. her that I don't care, and she shouldn't either. Because a PS5 is not as important as having your own house, which is what we're actually trying to get. We don't, I don't yeah. give a damn about a PS5. I want a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I hear you. I hear you. Though yeah. I would also be like, ooh, but it's, you know, it's just, uh, once we get it, we've got it. And then... <laughs> it's only 500 pounds. So, it's only 600 pounds. Yeah, I know like, we yeah. save up that money that's, again. That's 600 yeah. pounds out of the house fund, which we've been desperately trying to buy uh, to get up so we can yeah. buy a house. Uh, I'm not interested in anything other than uh, a <laughs> but the, funny house thing is, the funny thing is a few months ago the roles would have been swapped yeah. where I would have been the one saying no we need to save for it and Ziff would have been oh but it's only this much so it's yeah. funny yeah. how the yeah. times have changed it's not the times <laughs> it's not at all the times it's just that we're, we're paying rent um, at the moment Ugh, yeah. and you know i mean our, look our landlord is a great guy he's, he he's really awesome he's 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 he was one of the very few people that allowed us to actually get to rent the the, the property with our nine cats so um oh, amazing i like yeah, this he's, person he's a really nice guy um so we're we're happy with that and and we've we, he's done he's done us he's done us a lot but we do want to own our own house we do want to be paying that 500 pounds that we pay rent we'd like yeah. to actually pay it into our own house and, and yeah, pay your own bond for our house. also yeah. do our own things because like the walls at the moment in this office <laughs> are, the the one side is pink and the other side is purple and then yeah i'm seeing in your corner there <laughs> our bedroom is like a, a silvery shiny gray kind of color Ooh, so it's oh, really weird. sultry <laughs> <laughs> and he, he said to us we can paint it but it's like mm, yeah, but what just, would you pay? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We no, don't really I hear you. Like, 
Sean and I are in kind of the same boat. Is I mean, the apartment we're renting is beautiful and it's great, but it's every month you're paying someone else's bond or you're putting money in someone else's accounts, and you're kind of like, uh, you know. And we're actually um, in the process of finding a place overseas、mm. that we're keen to go. So we don't want to, you know, judge up a place that,、mm. you know, you know what I'm saying. So. I hear you. I hear you. So yeah, just stay strong. Don't don't get the PlayStation just yet. No, so you want to move overseas? <laughs> yeah.、Um, so we're we're thinking of starting a family, and you know, as much as we love South Africa, we really, really do. It's such a beautiful place for beautiful people.、Um, I mean, it's no secret the condition of the country. It's just not safe. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> and to raise. Kids, but also like、uh, schooling is expensive. Yeah, medical aid is expensive, expensive, you know. Yeah. So exactly. So we just,、um, I mean, we'll definitely come back and holidays, and we've got、mm-hmm. family here. But we just, yeah. So we're looking,、um, and obviously, it's just with a, with a green passport. It's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> so, no, the, green, the green passport、yeah. is not is, is is the very difficult thing. I mean, you know, we're lucky. We're lucky that Kez actually got us in on Ancestry.、Um, you'd think it would、oh, be、amazing. me. You'd think it would be me because <laughs> uh, uh, my 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 great grandfather is Scottish or was Scottish,、mm. right? You'd think it would be me, but no.、Mm-hmm. No, it's, <laughs> it's grandparents that it's yeah, grandparents. view the Ancestry. Yes. So so we got、yeah. into Scotland because Kez, her mother was born in England. No, my grandmother、mm. was born in England.、Oh, Her grandmother. Yes, I said your grandmother. No, you said my mum. The mother. I mean, grandmother. Her grandmother was born、mm. in England, so her grandmother has got had had、um, British passport that got Kez ancestry, which means we can be here, which is cool、mm-hmm. because now、um, we're here in Scotland. We can get our our British passports, and、uh, it'll take it's going to take a short while, but we'll get our British passports,、mm-hmm. and we'll we'll become citizens of two countries because we we both agreed that we're going to do dual citizenship. Um, because like、mm. like everyone, we have friends and family in、mm. South Africa, and、mm. it's 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 still home. But the way it was going back in 2019, and the way it is now, it's、mm. yeah. I mean, If, no, totally. that's why we always say, if you can move, we strongly suggest that you do. Yeah, yeah. Just have the job, options. Yeah, finding、have、a job for me was impossible. I I couldn't find a job. Especially not as an engineer or uh, uh, in, in in the technical field, which is, you know, this is the weirdest thing. I'm an artist who is technical. How, how does that work? I don't know. <laughs> But、um, uh, I've got I've got、uh, qualifications. I'm, I'm actually a qualified network specialist. So、um, oh wow, okay. So so I can I can literally build a PC network from scratch and、uh, make it secure. I can build VPNs and things like that, like proper、mm-hmm. not not. Not the VPNs like your Express VPNs and things like that, where it goes across the the the, the world and stuff like that. I'm talking about internal VPNs、mm-hmm. where you can literally、mm-hmm. privatize one server for one group of computers inside an office building and privatize another server for another group of computers in another part of the building. So I can do things like that.、Um, I am qualified to do that. But a man in his thirties. But a man in his thirties getting a job like that in South Africa is impossible. <laughs> I know, like that's that's like you get one and you're like, oh my word, this is the particle. The end of the rainbow, right? How、yeah. did I get so lucky? Exactly. Yeah. But,、um, we moved to Scotland, and look, the going wasn't easy. We started off. We started off as as cleaners. Our, our, well, okay. No,、I'm、we、like. started off as、um, temp workers, where we <laughs> you have like a day job,、uh, literally a day job, where it's just for that day or a、mm. few hours or、oh, a、yeah. week or something. But it's still something to to get mm, you mm. going. Yeah. And then then we did the cleaners thing. Yeah. So so we did we did temp jobs where we'd work for one day. Like I worked at Prestwick Air for, Airport for a day as a receptionist.、Um, you know, I literally sat there answering the phones and. Telling people where to go. Whoopee!、Yeah. <laughs> um, I I worked at KPMG for about a month and a half.、Okay. Um, in in the mail room, I literally just I sorted mail, and I, the job was literally I worked for like twenty minutes, and then I sat and read. And watched movies for the rest of the day because you couldn't do anything else. Say, is it as depressing as they make it seem in the movies? What the mail room. It's like- actually quite fun <laughs> if you have the right people with you. To be quite、He、honest, I had so much fun. I had awesome <laughs> colleagues. We used to sit and we, we used to sit and, and, and talk crap. We used to go out to to like on our lunch breaks. We'd go out to to the shops and we'd, we'd talk about games and see what games we could buy. And I used to I used to always come home with lots of games. Karen used to hate it <laughs> because I either have movies or games because I would have come home with with、uh, with the stuff from from CEX. 
So, mm. <laughs> so I do that. So then, then there was that, and then at that point, I think before before actually everything happened, you were still working at um, that uh, as a as a receptionist as well, weren't you? Yeah. At, at, at that other fire fire protection construction place. place. Yeah. Um, th- th- that's what Kez was doing then, and then we we both uh, well, Kez Kez unfortunately couldn't work there anymore. Uh, she well, landed up in hospital. Yeah. What happened was. Um, before we left South Africa, I had root canal surgery done, um, which was painful. But then we got <laughs> here and my teeth started to get sore and I went to the dentist and he told me that they actually didn't do the surgery properly. They still left some of the roots in. <gasps> and um, no. oh. I, ne- I, I needed to go back like that. So that was the Monday and they scheduled my re root canal surgery for the friday Mm. but that monday night i was in so much pain we actually had to go to the emergency room and they said they gave me medicine and everything but on our way to the emergency room my mouth actually started the side of my cheek actually started to swell really badly and then the tuesday morning i woke up and it looked like my face was out to here so Peepers. while yeah. all of this was going on i was still temping at this place and i said to them look i need to go to the dentist or to the doctor to see what the hell they need to do they booked me in to the hospital they had um they had to cut my neck over here um worst oh, experience i had they it was so badly inflated they had to drain the stuff and i had mm. like this bag on the side of my neck but while i was in hospital the the um, company I was working for then said that they need someone there, they need someone who they can rely on. All totally not my fault, but yeah. I, lo- I lost my contract with them because I was in you hospital. Were only <laughs> and yeah, you were only temp, so they, they actually they had a workaround that could actually, they could. Generally, they can't do that. Um, I was going to say, that sounds a bit crazy. Uh, but uh, usually, they're not allowed to. Because it's a temp contract, yeah. they mm. can let go of you at any point. And they did. Hectic. So it was it was rather annoying. Um, but also, you know what? That was the worst time of both of our lives. Firstly, Kes was in the most excruciating pain. And um, then, of course, you get me walking in there. And uh, I, I see her with this bag on her neck and blood draining into it. And my heart just sank. Uh, oh. It was the worst experience of my life as well. I literally got back into the car when I, I left the hospital that the first night. And I burst into tears. I was oh. so worried for her. <laughs> oh, you so, guys <laughs> yeah it was terrible i didn't like it i don't like seeing her in pain it's it's the worst experience yeah. but the point of the story is but the point that... of the story is <laughs> yeah. we moved on from from those jobs we moved on um because obviously mine was literally a temporary contract because the, the the gentleman who he had a stroke uh, I, I took over his part um his 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 job for a short while until he came back because he had a stroke um, so while he was back at work, he was busy talking to me and explaining everything and what had happened and all that. And um, he, he obviously came back. We sat down. Uh, obviously, I left after that. But he tried to keep me on for as long as possible because he liked me. He thought I was quite a nice guy and he wanted to keep me, you know, working for the company. Um, and um, he, he was like, okay, well, you know, we can only hold the contract for, the, for so long. So, you know, unfortunately, at the end of this week, it'll, it'll be the last one of the contract. I was like, okay, cool. Now I'll find another job. Um, and then obviously, uh, pandemic decided to, mm. to strike hard because uh, this is all in november by the way uh, like no november, the, december. no i went into hospital in january, january. february mm. this year yeah sorry no, last, last year. year last year uh, but so the, it was the pandemic basically all of this happened when we just got here basically. yeah so it's just after we'd gotten here so all of the shit started happening um and then and then we the the pandemic started and thankfully thankfully they actually found jobs for us cleaning like literally sanitizing, sanitizing petrol stations, the, the pumps, the doors, mm. that if anything that someone would touch, mm. we yeah. would need to go and sanitize. Okay. So we went and did that. And the thing is, you know, people were, people complain about the fact that there are no jobs in the country. People here complain that there's no jobs and then <laughs> I, ha- I have to. So we did it. It was seven days a week for four hours a day. It's not that bad. Granted, it's seven days a week but it's literally I hate working seven days a week it's literally like, huh? from seven to eleven and then, it's not even like it's like a third of a day yeah like almost a quarter of a day so like, yeah. when when we moved from that onto the job that we're in now the the agency replaced me with someone else <laughs> and the chick didn't even last a day that replaced me so i kept in touch because we were there for like five or six months we we built mm. friendships with the people mm. working at the petrol station 
and I kept in touch with them and they they messaged me on the day they're like you know what this person didn't even last she was there for about an hour and then decided you know what this is not for me and they couldn't find her and they realized that she actually left wow. after an hour of working there and then they complained that there's no jobs it's like you know what okay you get paid I got I, honestly as a cleaner working four hours a day for seven days a week I got paid more than I did as a technician in South Africa as a, wow. as a proper PC technician someone who should be getting paid a really like you, you know you'd think that they'd be getting Decent paid a salary. really good salary I got paid yeah. more in one week than I ever got paid uh, for a full month of salary at, at um, as, a, as, a, as a technician yeah like as a sanitization mm. person it was 9,000 basically 9,000 rand a week that's so crazy. Even now, but you know, and, like, it's always that old that old argument, right? Is um, you know, we, like not like no politics or anything, but like you know, yeah. if someone is taking your job, very covers that doesn't speak English or whatever the story may be. You should probably rethink your life decisions more than complain about other people, right? Well, and like that's is, yeah. point in fact. Like, yeah. are you too good to sanitize stuff? Exactly. And no, it's get paid for to four do it? hours a day. For four hours yeah. a day. We, we, you know, we no. came here. We, we are immigrants. You know, we're, we're not, we're mm. not, we're not citizens of the United Kingdom yet. We're still mm. immigrants. We're trying to become citizens, but we're still immigrants. Mm. And we're, we're working. We started working in what most people would call menial jobs. But mm. you know what? It gave us money. We could. Mm. It started getting us somewhere and started getting us on the path to getting better jobs. After and which, references and, exactly, yeah. and we got really good references because once we did those jobs, people, the 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 the, the, the temp agency actually had us on record. The other agency that mm. we spoke to found us these jobs that were also temp, and turned into permanent jobs. And mm. they they actually admired the fact that we were willing to work in in. It was Stephen actually who said mm. it. He, he admired the fact that we were willing to work in menial jobs like that just to make money so that we could actually get to a point where we could live again or we could actually live. yeah there's coming here there's always something to do like always. if you sign mm. up with those temp agencies they will find mm. something for you to do which, is, thing, which yeah. is really really awesome um, yeah. mm. even if it's like for a day or a few hours it, mm. if you start doing that then they'll go okay that per this person is wanting Reliable, to work yeah. let's see what else we can get them mm. and then you build it up to the point where we did and you go for those those really good contracts that can get you to those roles so yeah there's always something out there but yeah i think people just forget like they can't just trust you right like mm. you gotta you gotta they're scammy them. people mm -hmm. and whatever yeah so like if you're a genuinely decent nice person yeah. the opportunities are there you you just you know you've got to be go willing it. to take them and exactly. let your ego step aside a bit oh yes because you know? i know that in, if, if we were in South Africa and someone said to me, oh, do you want to go be a cleaner at a petrol station? I would have gone, no. No. Because I, yeah. I was okay. in an admin <laughs> job and I was like there. And then mm. you want me to go and do this. And then I realized after a while, you know what? You actually need to put your ego aside and just you go do. and do it. The thing is. No, exactly. Yeah, you get paid more to do it here though. That's the whole thing. Yeah, you that's the other so thing. Much, like, yeah. So your your money, time. Yeah. And if it is like almost valued more mm. than here, which is a big problem here, but like like you said, anyway, we went anyway, down a weird road. That was down the, down the road. <laughs> when you're not was, playing FPSs, was... what other games do you play? <laughs> yes, when not when not um, we're not arguing scary, with your mouse and keyboard. Yeah, not playing scary <laughs> games or shooting games. Mm. What else do you do? Shooter games, um, like gaming wise, what else do I do? I um, absolutely love fancy like. Um, I play a lot of um, ARPG. Oh, I used to. I used to. I say mm. I, I play a lot, but like when COVID hits and like we're stuck inside and everything, <laughs> um, I got lost in the world of Path of Exile. Oh, that's, that's, that's a cool. Um, it's quite a cool. Yeah, game. Sean and I, because Sean is also he works in IT and well not IT. He works in like uh, DevOps and things. So he's very um, statistics and numbers and, you know, he wants to take a build and make it the best build that ever has brother. existed. And I'm like, I brother. just want to loot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my brother like, in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, exactly. So like, so um, we actually played Diablo 2 Remastered the other day, you know, the free beta that was released. Mm. And um, it's quite funny because we're just, 
I kept saying he's a loot goblin, and he's like, you're a loot goblin. <laughs> 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 We're actually both loot goblins, just different types. <laughs> Where he likes to get all the good stuff, you know, comb through it, and then hoard it. Like, he'll hoard it. He's the dragon hiding all his gold in the cave where I'm the loot goblin that just wants like that big drop that oh my gosh did you see that an exalted orb <laughs> I'm so excited you know yeah. and then I'll just go and flog the rest of it off because I don't care um so yeah we got deep into Path of Exile um but then like because they every three or four months they do a different season mm. um until the elusive Path of Exile 2 is released Whenever that may be. Um, <laughs> and so some seasons are great, some aren't. So the last one we played was Heist, and that was phenomenal. The voice actors and the story, like the, it was like a whole separate game almost. It was mm. so, so cool. Um, and then there was Ritual, and we didn't enjoy that. And then Sean stays like finger on the pulse, and uh, the last few have not been good. Actually, this last season, they had like a 30% revenue drop, um, so they were scricking a bit. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Yeah, so we're actually looking to get back into Path of Exile again in October, so that's going to be on the roster. But in the meantime, we'll be playing Last Epoch, which is, in my opinion, Path of Exile on steroids, because huh. it's, it's still in beta. It hasn't got a, a 1.0 release yet, but it's looking phenomenal. So yeah, we also play a lot of that and fancy. I love Skyrim. Um, I'm trying to think now. Oh, crazy stuff like Alice the Madness Returns. I don't know if you guys ever oh, played yes. or... Kiz, oh, Kiz American McGee, she's, man. She's never played it. I have, I am no, the I've one who played, it, played and finished it. And then I get annoyed because I, I get I lose I get very frustrated with the puzzles and stuff. Mm. So mm. I, I give up too soon. But then Ziff plays it and I watch I sit and watch and go, Okay, cool. Now I don't need to play because I know what happens. <laughs> How's, how's that? She is she is the worst gamer I've ever known. She's like, I'm I'm a gamer. I, and then it's like, oh no, I, we we've we've finished Alice. It's like, no, we. I fucking finished Alice. You watched me finish How is Alice. Was so good? <laughs> I was like, I would walk a bit, and then I'd be like, I don't want to do this anymore. You do it. <laughs> That's what she does. I, like I've been trying to get my hands on it. Like. I'm struggling to find it, but I've got I've got it on PS3, but that's in South Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the issue. It's like it's all the way back then, and I, like I am following because um, I don't know how accurate the story is. But when I was reading up on when uh, Alice um, Asylum, I think mm. the new one's called it's Asylum. The new one, yeah, the new one's called Asylum. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I know that it originally was going to be done by EA Games and stuff again, but then they kind of screwed American McGee over. So yeah. he was like, uh, "How about no Scott?" And I really really admire him for it but i also kind of curse him because i'm like i just want the game bro yeah, yeah. i mean the game it's, it's gonna take uh, so longer but at least it's not with ea you know, it's, yeah it's, and it's, it's gonna EA. be his vision yeah yeah freaking it's not with EA. That broken piece of shit company <laughs> yeah the dlc rubbish like oh you want a hamburger here's the bun now you gotta buy, now you gotta the, buy the base <laughs> yeah, buy, the limits, buy the salsas and stuff so exactly. i can keep my eye on that um and if i had the cash to buy those um like uh you know, like as you pay um, tiers, like there's one that had that Vorpal, the Vorpal blade. Oh, oh yes, my gosh, the so model. Awesome. Oh, I wanted that so bad. We, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, with our salaries, we could. But again, we're saving up for a house, so we're not interested in that yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. But, <laughs> You've but got priorities. We've got priorities. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, with our salaries, we could buy stuff like that. But it's just what? You know, what would we buy? Um, you know, it's 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 awesome to get that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got, mm, mm. we we we. But what we've done though is we don't we don't buy like li li limited edition games like like you got your Cyberpunk's and whatnot. I got Cyberpunk. Mm. I've got the hard copy of Cyberpunk. I never returned it because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I know how CD Projekt Red works, and and for those mm. the, for those who kept the game, which there were a lot that actually kept the game, there were a shit ton of people that kept their their copies of the game because they knew CD Projekt Red are known to fuck their games up in the beginning <laughs> they just they don't know how to do how to release properly they're terrible at it yeah so if you keep the game and you wait for a while eventually the game will come out with a good patch the game will be fixed completely and you'll be able to play it and that's Ooh. what they've done so that or that's mm. what they're doing at the moment so we're all waiting but what we did do is we bought a whole bunch of figurines like little we've got v and we've got um we've got jack so we've got both of them. Um, Johnny Silverhand, not Johnny Jack. Silver, sorry, Johnny Silverhand. 
Mm. Uh, we've got them both. I've got uh, I've got him with the, his guitar and the strap and all that stuff, and I've got V with a sword and a machine gun. So we we did get those two. I, we, we couldn't find the female version of the V, unfortunately. Otherwise, we'd get that too, mm. because you've got to have the whole collection. Otherwise, it just doesn't. Fit. Yes, gotta catch them all. Yes, gotta and, catch them all. And because <laughs> because you can't have one V without the other, you know, it, it, it just mm-hmm. it makes sense. Um, I agree. You know, because because that's what I like about these games is that they're they're they they've got two models. You know, it's like your your Mass Effect as well. You've got your you, you can you can choose whether you want to play as a male or a female. It doesn't really matter. Mm. So it's it's mm. it's great. That's how that's how games should be. You know, you get not all 100%. of them. I understand where the stories come from. Like you got your, your you got your your Kingdom Come Deliverance where you do play as a mm. as a man because he was the knight that actually fought you. But they've got the DLC which is a woman's lot, which talks about Teresa, which is your your character's soon to be wife i'm assuming i haven't gotten that far mm. but it, it talks about her, her story and how she escaped the humans and how she is she escaped the evil r word uh, i'm not going to mention that word because we will definitely mm. get banned for it but the, she escaped mm. being awed by uh, uh, mm. quite a few of them uh, uh, the humans with the help of you running and okay well i did it differently you can't survive <laughs> if you go in and you try and fight these guys you cannot survive you will die they will literally deck okay. you and you will die one hit and you're like on the ground dead no head um, so what I do is I run past, I look at them and I whistle for the horse because then they look at you uh. and they run after you. So I whistle for the horse, they all come running after me, jump on the horse and I'm like, come fuckers, follow me! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gone. And I'm off. <laughs> I appreciate that they do that because that's a lot of it, a lot of the time, like especially with, um, and again, I don't have any issue if it's historically accurate. Mm. Because history is history, and obviously it's it's written by the victors, and you can't obviously really change it, for the longest of time, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, men played the main role, and I get it, it but yeah, like it's great that they went a little deeper, because mm. I mean, you couldn't have everybody else unless there were women there too, right, exactly. doing all the stuff it's... and. The whole thing is so it's society. Cool society was society, and that's what they were trying to bring out. And from what I can see in Kingdom Come Deliverance, what they were trying to bring out was society and how the how mm. how both both parts of society were just as important. I mean, they talk about mm. they talk about Stephanie and uh, Stephanie of 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 Talmberg and her her husband who was trapped in in uh, who was who was imprisoned for years and she can no longer bear children and neither can he because he is old and i mean she's she's probably in her 30s and he he was probably about 50 or 60 but um she apparently can't bear any children uh, i'm assuming that it was like that before though but they didn't actually know that because you know in in your 30s you can actually still produce it's just uh, i think back then it was a bit of an issue that that um they they obviously didn't have size that we have today so they couldn't tell that she was actually infertile and she wasn't able to produce or he wasn't able to produce you, we don't know but mm. um there, there, there's the story of her and how you don't you don't really you don't really play the story but she tells you about what happened and how she actually had to struggle without her husband and how she hated the fact that he was gone and you know she was alone and she was scared for her life because at any point someone could come in and take over the castle and just are and kill her you know and that was the worst part of it for her and she she was also like you know where i didn't have my husband to protect me which is like okay you know i love the history i think it's brilliant that they actually added that in but with with teresa's story it was more about how she actually got out and went from from um from skelets to to um ratai and um, then you, uh, uh, from what I can tell, I haven't played the part that part yet. I'm going through the DLC slowly. I haven't even gotten to the end of the story yet. So, bear yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I it do, sounds like. Yeah, I do want to see what her story is like because um, mm. it's bound to be quite interesting to see what Teresa's story is all about and how she actually, um, how uh, what she did while uh, while um, while your character, I, I forget his name every single time. Um, how how. Anyway. Um, while he ran away and did his his battling and stuff like that to figure out what she does you know um because back back in those days there were no shield maidens stop you though because it's mm. about that time oh it's about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're getting into it i love it i love it yeah. but <laughs> the, pro- the, problem, the problem with talking this shit is i i, I don't stop um, <laughs> but anyway yeah we're so- gonna have many conversations off the air like i love that sort of stuff like i was gonna be like have you guys read the seven sisters series because it's basically all about women during those crazy times so yeah 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 no no i can't say we have yet but we'll talk about that off air it's fine uh we've got to yeah. we've got to end it now anyway it's been over an hour so 
Um, yeah. But this is where this is the part of the entire stream where you, or stream the podcast where you plug yourself, your where channel, and your stuff. Where can we find you? Yeah, where can we Ooh, find you? So weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm currently obviously only on Twitch for like video stuff. Uh, which is uh, Twitch TV, twitch.tv forward slash candy underscore rocket. And then I'm on most of the socials, not Facebook. Bleh. Um, <laughs> Who wants I'm to be on, on Facebook? Ugh. Yeah, what, what is Facebook? What is <laughs> so I'm on TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Twitter, all with the handle candy underscore rocket. Um, so I try and stay as active on all of them as I can. Not as much as on TikTok, but I'm working on that. So yeah, if you want to see me <laughs> which is a weird <laughs> thing to say that's where you can find me so it's mostly on twitch awesome. candy underscore rockets Yo. nice angel so, yeah. where can we find us okay so the podcast mm. um the the faces the beautiful everything's is on our youtube channel and then the voices if you just want to listen will be on anchor and that you can listen on um spotify apple itunes google podcasts and many more um, but in general, we are on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and BitChute. And Odyssey. Oh. She keeps and forgetting <laughs> that we need to nice. upload to Odyssey. And we're also now officially on Oh yes, and we're Gamesh. on Gamesh. Um, that's where I stream too. So, Kiz, Kiz streams to Twitch, I stream to Glamesh because I have no interest in streaming to Twitch. Anyway. I have my reasons, but anyway, that's, 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 <laughs> you all know my reasons anyway, you've heard them. Um. Anyway, yeah, so so that, that's it. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. It's been uh, uh, an interesting time of me talking crap most of the time, which is kind of annoying. I, I should one. shut up. I should really shut <laughs> up. Um, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you really like this video, hit that like button. It does help us. The algorithm does actually allow uh, give us a bit more leeway if you like that, uh, like the videos. Hit that share button. Get some more people watching us. Also, hit that subscribe button because that helps the algorithm too. Um, you can hit the bell notification. Not that it'll do anything, but give it a shot. Why not? You never know. YouTube <laughs> might notify you. You never know. Also, because we're so close to 250 subscribers on YouTube, so go do it. Woo! Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not huge, it's not but, huge it's but it's still, there. yeah, exactly. Hey, it's 250 more than before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've, how long have we been at the top? Four years now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yes, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember, Kiki, Kiki. Kiki, Kiki. Bye.